Hey everybody, here's an update on the <clears throat> latest repair effort of the Trimaran Epicurus. I'm standing here underneath of my provisional shelter uh, on a really sunny day with a little bit of a windstorm here, but I'll try to keep this as, as concise and uh, stable as I can. Um, I've posted some previous content in the past, and this is more or less a reiteration of that, and abbre as abbreviated and concise and clear as I can make it. Now, this is a cylinder molded 37 foot trimaran that was built in Tonga in the early 90s based on a rather sophisticated Kurt Hughes design that was hand drawn in. I believe 1983 uh, could be off by a, a year or so, but the um, <clears throat> the design utilizes plywood and um, composite materials to the best and highest use. There have been some some improvements since this design was created. And we're going to go into that a little bit in detail here. Uh, most of them are relatively minor, um, improving the, the weight and windward ability of these vessels. And I will try to incorporate some of these improvements to the best of my ability as I go along uh, with the limitations that I've uh, encountered with material availability here in Japan um, there may be only so much I can do however we'll try our best so moving on here um, basically let me step back a little bit so this is a bit more clear this is the dodger in the cockpit back there is the aft end of the main hull and what you're looking at here is the aft connective has had the upper fairing removed and moving around here forward there's the cabin side and the forward connective and the starboard ama um, these connectives are built out of plywood and utilize a warren style truss which is buried in two layers of um, nine millimeter plywood that's scarfed together with a minimum of 12 to one scarf on the inner and outer sides with some transverse cap strips or cap stringers and some vertical members that are positioned diagonally within the inner and outer layer. Now the builder <coughs> violated a few principles of this, of this design in constructing this boat and he used used a 12 millimeter plywood skin for the upper fairing and this upper skin was essentially cut through uh, to facilitate the entry of these uh, tr transverse four to half position drains um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but let's see here. Okay, there we go. These four to aft transverse drains, and in doing so, cut into the plywood skin, the upper fairing, thereby violating its strength in a few areas. Um, he used PVC tubing for hatch combing drains, and this is not the best practice. PVC doesn't really bond to anything very well and even though the tubing was bedded in with thickened epoxy, the moisture migrated in and along the perimeter of some oversized locker openings which were cut in here, uh, well over 70% of this upper fairing area, uh, the moisture migrated across and what remained of that fairing, which came within about six inches of the bulkhead, um, 
cracked and failed in this in these areas and also uh, rotted out uh, in the areas adjacent to the tube. Further, he drilled into the cap stringers and installed some deck penetrating hardware and bedded in these massive uh, washers and nuts. So I will likely need to excavate those out um, and use a router to step out a scarf, a rather long scarf, and put in some graving pieces into here. Now, these lower fairings have uh, not been properly sealed and the drain tubes, again, PVC, more things done wrong. You can see the moisture came into the plywood and caused the uh, surface coating of epoxy, which was grossly inadequate to crack. Also, um, moisture traveled throughout the plywood, causing it to expand in these cracks formed here as well. This drain was very, very poorly bedded. Um, water got in and migrated down uh, toward the main hull. Now, I should, I should mention um, with a great uh, deal of, of seriousness here that keeping these internal spaces dry and or waterproofing these lockers should they be used um, is extremely important because whenever I, as evidence of, of that, whenever I was working back here in the aft cabin before this tent was up on a rainy day, I had that um, stern locker covered with four layers of blue uh, poly tarp at the time, all of which were in much better condition and hadn't suffered from damage from the sun. So it was raining outside and I was working away in there and I noticed that my repair area on the starboard side um, had a wet spot and I couldn't figure out why. How on earth could this internal space be getting wet when the deck up above it was completely covered with blue tarp? Well, I, I did some messing around and I covered this, this upper beam fairing with a few layers of tarp, evacuated the water, and as it continued to rain, no more water came in. The water was migrating down through this plywood, getting into a, a fairing that ran down along the hull side, and or it was traveling down a, a glue line that was not completely um, bonded between two between two pieces of lumber and traveling down the aftermost bulkhead and into an internal area um, that I had cut open to inspect. So keeping the keeping the deck uh, watertight is extremely important on these multi holes. You can have you can have w rainwater, which is insidious and most destructive to wood. Um, wood doesn't rot in salt water. Um, unless you get tornado worms, but that's kind of off the subject here a little bit. But basically, I decided to um, close up this upper beam and put on a new upper fairing. And in doing that, I've been able to get in here and see some areas on the starboard side that share some of the same issues as the port side. The port side had a large vertical crack traveling traveling up this forward bulkhead. Now, I should mention that in, in concert with that crack, the AMA down on the inboard side had a large hole that had been patched up with some bog and some pieces of glass. And I suspect that possibly the inner on my side was crashed on something. Now, whether that crack was induced by this collision um, or it was a combination of the presence of moisture, cyclical loading on the structure, and then the straw that, pardon the pun, broke the camel's back was the collision. I'm not certain which of those, but it may have been a combination of all three. Now, I'm getting into a bit of 
um, over time here with this first video, so I'm going to take a brief pause and continue this in part two. You can find that posted as well. Feel free to have a look.